thank you again for coming to my channel. Um, so I did a um, rain gear test for my AT equipment yesterday in solid pouring rain. Um, it's rained for about 48 hours straight and I only went out and only did about three miles yesterday. Um, but I started showing some clips of that on my social media and I got a lot of comments and a lot of questions in my hiking groups. Um, so I'm going to be putting up the full video of um, the whole adventure of how I actually did this over two days and a couple of different hikes and testing different rain gear. Um, but then also breaking that video up. So that will be up on my YouTube if you want to watch the whole adventure. But I'm breaking that down into shorter videos of the actual specific gear. Forgive me for the redundancy. Some of this is in the longer video and then I'm making these shorter videos and this that I'm recording right now will be at the beginning of each of those shorter videos. Um, so here we go with the individual reviews of the products that I've been using. Okay, let's talk base layers for when it's wet, uh, whether it's snow or rain. Um, my example is pouring rain. Um, so I had on during my hike 150 merino wool base layer bottoms and top. Um, I had over my bottoms a pair of North Face hiking pants and I'm gonna try to find online what the actual style number or name of these are from North Face. Um, they do have a little bit of water resistance. Um, I showed that. I'll find the clip and show that. Um, I stood outside when it was just like barely sprinkling and you could see the water actually bubbling up on it. Um, so in like a very misty light rain, these work on their own. Um, at the end, so I wore them hiking then um, that evening on Blood Mountain and I didn't put anything over top of them um, like, you know, actual rain pants. And they were definitely damp when I got home and took them off. Um, they dried super fast. I mean, they were, they were bone dry by morning. I think they were dry before I even actually went to sleep that night. Um, and my base layer underneath it was mostly dry as well. Um, as you can tell, I'm a little thicker through the thighs, um, especially right now I need to lose a little weight, but I'm always that way. It's just the way my body's built. And so I have a horrible time with pants because I usually have like a small waist and I'm short. I have like a 28 inseam, but I'm thicker through the thighs and booty. So I have a bit of a problem um, with, in this instance, like with layering, um, if this were to get wet through the thighs, then my base layer underneath it is going to get wet as well because they're tighter together than like around my ankles and knees where it's looser. So when I got home that night, this and like kind of through my thighs on my base layer were damp. Um, but for just a very light rain or um, like a mistiness, like what happens in the Smokies in Appalachia where it's just that kind of foggy mistiness, mistiness going on, these actually are a really good option. And again, I'm so sorry, I don't know what the model number is from North Face, but I'll try to find them. So in the pouring rain yesterday, I had on, this is my base layer, um, this Merino wool. I got these at Sierra it, um, out west. Uh, there are some locations in the Northeast and I love that store. It's like TJ Maxx for outdoor gear. It's got all your brand name stuff and all your, like this is 100% Merino wool. Um, and these cost $25 as opposed to $100 at REI. Um, then this was over top of them. So last night when I got home and I took everything off and laid it all out to dry, um, and now I have a clip of a video I did this morning with everything laid out and drying. Um, my merino wool layers were not dry by the next morning and pretty much everything else was. So I was a little disappointed in that. I mean, I know, you know, natural fibers can, are supposed to, supposed to dry a little bit faster. Um, but like the dry wicking stuff dries faster than that. But then you got polyester and some of the natural fibers, um, odor control, that kind of things for a through hike, um, for just a simple day hike or section hike. Um, I don't know. I don't want to tell you what to do. It, it, again, a lot of this is as, as individual as you are. I was just disappointed that my Merino wool wasn't drier than it was this morning. Um, so I put my um, base layer back on here. Um, this is an REI 150. And I was really chilly when I first put it on and it was like 60 degrees, but it was still damp. 
Um, so that's actually why I have this fleece on over it. Now I can say honestly it's dry now underneath there but man if it had been like nine o'clock in the morning and I had put this on and it was 30 degrees out I would have been shivering. Um, but you know that's what your mid layer and your top layers are for and whatever but yeah it was a little frustrating. So I mean I'm keeping my setup the way that it is uh, but I just wanted to mention that um, after getting wet my stuff wasn't totally dry overnight. And what really disappointed me, these are actually still damp. Um, my merino wool liners, glove liners here, um, you know, they got really wet yesterday because I forgot my waterproof mittens to go over them. So don't do that. <laughs> um, these are still wet. Like I can't wring them out or anything. Like this morning, I probably could have still like wrung them out. They were still that wet and they're still damp. So, I mean, these are your extremities. These are your fingers. You don't want to be putting wet wool back on them especially like today the temperature is dropping and it's supposed to be in the 20s again by this evening like ugh, I don't even like it's damp and gross I'm putting it on right now I don't want to go out in cold weather with that so um do I'm gonna be doing everything I can to keep these dry because they take a while to actually dry um yeah so I think that's all I wanted to say about base layers and merino wool <laughs>